up guys? It feels like the NFL changes rules every year in order to avoid more officiating controversy. It started with clarifying the catch rule. Then they decided to allow coaches to challenge pass interference calls. It was supposed to cut back on officiating miscues. A win-win for everybody, right? Well, wrong. We're not even halfway through the 2019 NFL season and already we've seen an abundance of blown calls. There's already enough officiating errors for us to make this list. So without further ado, here are the 20 worst calls so far from the 2019 NFL season. Make sure to subscribe to TPS and put on your notifications. We post videos all the time. New videos all the time. Number 20, Avante Maddox avoids pass interference. The Green Bay Packers hosted the Philadelphia Eagles in a thrilling back and forth Thursday night football showdown in week four. But of course, this primetime game just had to be influenced in some form by woeful officiating. During the third quarter, Avante Maddox of the Eagles got away with obvious pass interference on Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Worse yet, Packers head coach Matt LaFleur threw the challenge flag and the officials still determined that there was no pass interference. The Eagles wound up winning the game by a touchdown, but it could have been a much different outcome if the refs threw the flag. Number 19, Clay Matthews, roughing the passer on Russell Wilson. The Los Angeles Rams visited the Seattle Seahawks in week five on Thursday Night Football. The game came down to the final minutes here, and Seattle was bailed out by a horrendous roughing the passer penalty on Clay Matthews. Even former NFL quarterback Troy Aikman was no fan of this. At this rate, the NFL will be transitioning to flag football and physical contact with the QB will be banned forever. Number 18, Maurice Hurst roughs Mitch Trubisky. For defensive players, there's nothing worse than making a big play only to have it nullified by a penalty. Obviously, D Ford's costly offside penalty in the 2018 AFC Championship game comes to mind, but at least that wasn't an officiating error. In this case, the Oakland Raiders recorded an interception off Mitch Trubisky in their Week 5 London showdown. Too bad it was taken away because of Maurice Hurst roughing the passer penalty on Trubisky. We could be wrong, but doesn't the NFL permit defensive players to go after quarterbacks once in a while? No? No. Okay. Sorry, Maurice, but uh, no more sacks or attempts to sack the quarterback allowed. Number 17, Julian Edelman draws Phantom P.I. Julian Edelman is one of the most difficult receivers to cover. Plain and simple. Oh my God, isn't it fun being Edelman? Even if you don't make a catch, simply falling down means the referees will throw a flag. Refs, that was good coverage by Monte Nicholson. Just because a receiver falls, it doesn't mean it's pass interference. Come on. Number 16, Rashawn Gary can't touch Dak Prescott's helmet. The Green Bay Packers visited Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys in week five of the 2019 season. Looking to bounce back after being the victims of awful officiating in the aforementioned week four loss to Philly. The good news? The Packers beat the Cowboys soundly by a final score of 34 to 24. The bad news? They were still victims of another horrible referee miscue. Take the case over Sean Gary was flagged when he hit Dak Prescott in the helmet. Hey, if that's a penalty, then Gary should just be happy that he didn't end up receiving a five game suspension for barely touching Prescott. Number 15, carry on Johnson's incomplete pass. Boy, was the Green Bay Packers and Detroit Lions Week 6 contest perhaps the most poorly officiated game from start to finish in NFL history. The Lions have been robbed numerous times by officiating mistakes throughout the years. Running back Carryon Johnson will happily tell you about this. His clutch third down catch in the fourth quarter was ruled an incomplete pass. Didn't the NFL make an emphasis on clarifying the catch rule? Because apparently not. Sadly for the Lions, that was only one of the very many inexcusable mistakes made by the officials that night. Number 14, T.Y. Hilton's offensive PI penalty versus Chiefs. Usually when we complain about pass interference penalties, it regards defensive players. But T.Y. Hilton's phantom offensive pass interference penalty against the Kansas City Chiefs in week five was a whole new level of awfulness. In short, Hilton essentially got flagged for doing absolutely nothing to the Chiefs defender here. Former NFL referees couldn't understand the penalty call either. That's when you know the refs made a huge mistake. The Colts won the game anyway, so at least this awful call didn't hurt them. Number 13, roughing the passer cost Broncos versus Bears. The Denver Broncos were on the verge of defeating the Chicago Bears at home in week two. Bradley Chubb got a hit on quarterback Mr. Trubisky, who got rid of the ball just in time to avoid a sack. But somehow Chubb was flagged for roughing the passer, even though it totally looked like a clean hit on the quarterback. Chicago made good use of the call and boosted a game-winning field goal as time expired. If the Broncos miss the playoffs, and if the Bears get in, look back on this game as a potential difference maker. The Broncos really got robbed here. Number 12, Jarvis Landry's blindside block. The Cleveland Browns were on the wrong side of plenty of officiating miscues during their week six home game against the Seattle Seahawks. It was downright ugly, and you can't blame Baker Mayfield for calling the referees out. Someone had to do it. But without a doubt, the most cringeworthy call was Jarvis Landry's blindside block penalty. Seriously, how can you possibly call this? Sure, the Browns looked woeful during their first six games, but it's pretty hard for anybody to win when you have calls like that working against you. Number 11, Kamale Correa, roughing Gardner Minshew. We've already brought up numerous roughing the passer penalties that were just downright awful. Well, you better not think for an instant we're done with roughing the passer 
your calls on this video. There's a long way to go, guys. The Tennessee Titans linebacker was flagged for roughing Gardner Minshew here. We really can't see the penalty at all. Yo, refs, the guy is allowed to make contact with the quarterback. Give him a break. Number 10, no flag on Bud Dupree's headshot to Russell Wilson. The NFL's roughing the passer rule tends to draw controversy because of the many soft calls. You can barely touch or even breathe on a quarterback anymore without taking a penalty. It's just silly. Meanwhile, the officials often miss some blatant roughing the passer penalties that should actually be called. Case in point, when Bud Dupree dished out an ugly and vicious headshot to Russell Wilson during a week two game. The Seahawks didn't end up winning this game, but that doesn't take away how wretched the current officiating system is. You cannot miss a call like this. If there is any saving grace. Dupree was hit with a fine of $21,056. Well, that's good. Number nine, refs screw lines again. This easy PI call. Remember when we brought up the Lions week six loss to the Packers? Yeah, we're far from done here. The Lions led by two points with seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Matthew Stafford threw a deep ball to Marvin Jones, hoping to land the eventual knockout punch. The pass sailed incomplete, but Jones was clearly interfered with. Somehow the officials didn't see the penalty. Head coach Matt Patricia didn't use his coach's challenge. Although many pundits defended him since refs never reverse pass interference calls after video reviews these days. Don't blame Patricia. Blame the ref for missing a textbook case of pass interference. Number eight, Ola Sukhani Adani, roughing the passer. The Pittsburgh Steelers and Baltimore Ravens clashed in a pivotal week five contest. The one in three Steelers needed a win to keep their slim playoff hopes alive. But it's quite hard to win when you're flagged for roughing the passer, especially when you didn't even commit a roughing the passer penalty. Penalty. What was a Danny supposed to do there? Try to defy physics and stop his momentum? Number seven, refs take away 15 seconds from Saints. Almost eight months after their gut-wrenching NFC title game loss in the Superdome, the Saints finally returned home for their week one contest against the Houston Texans. But this is the Saints we're talking about. So that meant Drew Brees and co had to be screwed by another officiating mistake. With less than a minute to go in the first half, officials initiated a booth review to see if Michael Thomas got a first down. The 10 second runoff should have gone from 41 to 31 seconds, but the clock had initially stopped at 26 seconds, so the officials docked the 10 seconds from there. Thus, New Orleans had little time to move closer to a field goal attempt. Well, Lutz wound up missing a 56-yarder. The Saints won anyway, but it's still inexcusable that officials made such a woeful mistake. And Alberto Riverin even admitted that the refs got it wrong here. Are the refs done screwing the Saints now? Like, come on. Honestly, I don't feel like they deserve this. Like, they, they're a good team. They got good people on it. Like, not a, just not even a side good player. They got good people there. Like, come on. I'll them out. Number six, Lions versus Packers. Phantom hands to the face times two. Not once, but twice Detroit Lions defensive end, Trey Flowers was flagged for phantom hands to the face penalties. The first one was huge in helping the Packers keep alive a much needed scoring drive to get back in the game. The second one set up an easy game winning field goal for Mason Crosby, thus giving Detroit no shot at getting the ball back with a chance to win. Lions fans, we feel for you. We really do. Number five, a giant missed PI call. The millions of New England Patriots haters can help but get frustrated any time the team benefits from some terrible officiating calls. And let's be real, the Patriots are on the right side of controversial calls more often than not. Yes, the Patriots throttled the New York Giants in their week six Thursday night football showdown, but that doesn't mean it was acceptable for refs to miss this blatant PI call. The Giants threw the challenge flag, and the average person was probably 90% sure it'd be overturned, except it wasn't. Why'd they bother inserting the new PI challenge rules anyway? Just proves even more how it's rigged. Number four, generous first down in Bucks Panthers game. The Carolina Panthers hosted the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Thursday Night Football in Week 2. This was a sloppy and mistake-filled game where neither offense really did a whole lot of anything. It was pretty much a yawn fest, to be honest. If you were fed up with this game, you probably got even more irritated when officials made a laughable mistake. You know, when they gave the Panthers an extremely generous first down spot here. The Bucs wound up winning the game anyway. So folks quickly forgot about this officiating mistake. Still, that's just embarrassing on so many levels. Number three, Packers had 13 players on the field. This game was so badly officiated. We hate to take away a tremendous performance by Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers defense. But like, dude, the refs like gifted them that week six home win against the Lions. We all know it. Yeah, a lot of penalties are clearly judgment calls. And sometimes the judgment is bad, but that's how it is. Then there are factual penalties. Like you totally can't argue when a team has too many guys in the field. Somehow the Packers Packers got away with 13 on the field. That's right, not 12 players, but 13. That's two too many, two. 
Like this game, uh, how many have we done from this game so far? Like three or four? Like what? Refs, what were you doing? Goodell, what are you doing? We see what's going on here and it's not good. So like fix it. I bet the Packers are probably gonna try it again to be honest, like really. Number two, early whistle cost Saints versus Rams. Again, every New Orleans Saints fan, um, actually every, every NFL fan circled their calendar for the week two contest between the Saints and the Rams. After all, everybody wanted to see how New Orleans would react after the controversial no PI call that cost them a trip to the Super Bowl in the 2018 NFC Championship game. Well, the Saints were once again screwed by a brutal officiating miscue. New Orleans strip sacked Jared Goff and they had a clear path to the end zone for a fumble recovery touchdown. But the refs made a giant mistake by simply blowing the whistle way too early. New Orleans also lost that game 27-9. There's no telling how different it could have been if the officials didn't ruin the Saints' momentum by blowing that early whistle. Number one, Miles Sanders' blatant face mask goes uncalled. It's safe to say that face mask penalties are the hardest ones for anybody to complain about. If you grab a guy by the mask, it's a penalty. It's how it is. This rule is enforced for the purposes of player safety. It's extremely dangerous. But poor Philadelphia Eagles running back Miles Sanders had his helmet ripped off by his face mask during this week three battle with the Lions. Yeah, and the NFL is trying to enforce player safety. Oh, also, it's worth noting uh, that this game featured the same back judge who didn't throw the flag on the blatant PI call during the Saints round. Rams NFC Championship game. So yeah, I'll just let that sit there for a second. What other horrible NFL referee calls from this first six weeks should we have included on our list? Join me in the comment section below. Follow myself and TPS on social media. We post great content all the time. Go follow me on TikTok. I make them sometimes. Sometimes. I don't know. I just want to, you know, I, it's fun. Subscribe to TPS because we post videos all the time. Sports content all the time. If you want more sports content, subscribe. We talk about it like every day. If you like this video, give it a like. It takes one click and it really, really helps us out. So we appreciate it. We appreciate you. You are, we would be nothing without you, honestly. So give it a like. Of course, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jason Biondo. Money. Money.